All right, everyone. We're recording lesson 9-7. 9-7 is the lesson, my dear. It's theorem 9-10. <laughs> and it starts on page 388C in Braille, volume 36, and 388 in print, down at the bottom of the page. Basically, if uh, two triangles are similar, are we, we're going to look at whether the measure of their corresponding sides, uh, if the relationship of their perimeters is the same. And so that should make sense. If um, so let's just, before we read this theorem, think about all that we've learned about similar triangles. We learned that similar triangles become side, 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 don't they? We can have side, angle, side, and then they're similar, and then that would mean all the sides are the same. We could have angle, angle, and that would mean they're similar, and all the sides are similar. Not the same, but similar. So if all the sides are similar, and we add them all up to get the perimeter, are the perimeters also going to be similar? Are they going to be proportionate? And that would that would make logical sense, wouldn't it, if yes. we kind of go through our geometry logic. So, um, so theorem 9-10 says just that. Up at the top of there at C388, it says if two triangles are similar, then the measures of the corresponding perimeters are proportional to the measures of the corresponding sides. So now we're just getting every swinging thing corresponds and is proportional to each other, including the perimeters. And so it says, in symbols, triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF, then the perimeter of ABC is, is in ratio to the perimeter of DEF, which equals the, the ratio of the sides. So the perimeter is also proportional to every one of the sides, AB to DE, B, C, D, E, F, and C, A, D, F, D. Any one of those could be a proportion. So if you know, if you know two corresponding sides and you know one of the perimeters, you can find the other perimeter based upon that ratio. You can just do cross multiplication and divide all day long. So it's just more of that and realizing perimeters now are thrown into the mix. So let's take a look at example one. On page 389, it's a page break on this page, so 389, and it says you can find the measure measures of all three sides of a triangle when you know the perimeter of the triangle and the measures of the sides of a similar triangle. So it's going to take us through that in example one. It says um, the perimeter of triangle RST is nine units, and Triangle MNP, this is all the way at the bottom of your page, triangle MNP is similar to triangle RST. Find the value of each variable. And then we have a graphic to look at, which okay. makes this so much nicer to figure out, right? So we want to keep in our brain that the perimeter is nine units of RST. We have two triangles at the top of the next page, 389A. M is at the very top vertex of the top triangle. N is at the left, and um, P is over at the right. So there's your triangle. This is, it looks like a scalene, acute, right? Because we could draw an altitude from M if we wanted to. And they have some measurements from M to N on the left hand side is three. From M to P on the right-hand side is 4.5. And from N to P on the bottom is 6. And directly below it, kind of it looks like a bit of a slide and a rotation, yes? Um, there's a little triangle underneath it. And the top vertex is R. The left vertex is S. And the right vertex is P. And the measurements from R to S are X. So that corresponds with our MN, doesn't it? R to T is Z. And S to T is Y. It looks like that braille bumps into the, the bottom side a little bit. Just a little bit. OK. So they go through the proof process down below. They say, well, since MN can be to RS, so that would equal the perimeter of triangle um, 
MNP and perimeter of RST. So we're told that RST is 9 in the givens. We're going to use the substitution property and we're going to plug in information. So MN is 3 and RS is X. So they write that down on the next step. MN is 3. They write down 3 for MN and X for the RS. Then they write down 13.5 for the perimeter because we got to go back up and do some basic math. 3 plus 4.5 plus 6 is 13.5 for our perimeter of our big triangle, right? So we put 13.5, we substitute that in for perimeter of the triangle MNP, and then 9 for the perimeter of RST because we were given that. Yeah. Okay? Now we just do the math, right? Cross, multiply, divide. 3 times 9, 27. 13.5x, divide 27 by 13.5, and x equals 2. And then you just start doing it for everything after that. Now, you don't have to use the perimeter every time if you don't want to, because now you have 3 is to 2, don't you, yep. once you found that. So you can use 3 is to 2 as 4.5 is to z. Those two correspond, don't they? The MP to the RT. And then you could do it again and do 3 is to 2 as 6 is to Y and just do that one. And so that's what they do through each one of the next examples is they just do step, they use the definition of similar polygons. You could continue to use the perimeter if you wanted to. It doesn't matter. You could keep using 13.5 to 9. However, once you get 3 to 2, that's just a little nicer number to deal with than 13.5. If you can simplify down your numbers you deal with, you always want to do that to make the math simpler. So 3 is to 2 as 6 is to y. Cross multiply, 3y equals 12, divide by 3, y equals 4. And then you can do 3 is to 2 as 4.5 is to z. Cross multiply, 3z equals 9, divide 9 by 3, z equals 3. Pretty basic. All right? That makes sense? Yeah. yeah. All right. So um, let's do, it says the perimeter. So on your turn, let's find it. Here it is. So two pages later on C389, C389, we get to practice. We're just going to keep practicing this, this whole kind of putting it in different ways, this whole theorem for several pages. Um, several problems. So here we go. We have uh, the perimeter of KQV is 72 units, and triangle DHJ is similar to triangle KQV. Find the value of each variable. So you have a little triangle on the left, and then a big triangle on the right. It looks like a, a slide, a translation, a slide over and down, and obviously a dilation or magnification. The little triangle has the top vertex H, the bottom left vertex is G, and the bottom right vertex is J. And from H to G is 16, and they double brailed that for you. <laughs> Brailo! 16, 16. It just take one of the 16s. That would confuse us. Yeah. When and then H to J <laughs> is 12. Yeah, so ignore one of those 16s. Somebody got happy with the brailer. And then 20 is from D to J. All right? I know. They, I don't think they did a whole lot of proofreading. Because they could have erased one of these. Things. Exactly. But I don't. they don't proofread like Ogden does. Now, the triangle to the right, the magnification, um, Q is the top vertex, K is the bottom left, and B is the bottom right. Connect the dots there, and you have your big similar triangle. You're told they're similar in the givens with the little tilde, right? The dot four and one, five, six. From Q to K is A. From Q to V is B. And from Q to V, it's C, and C runs into your base of your triangle. You might not be able to find it until you find the English language yeah. indicator. Okay. So the perimeter you're given of Q, KQV is 72 units. So we do the same thing as we did in the last example. First, you have to find the perimeter of your little triangle, 16 
20, and 12. What is that? Forty-eight. Eight. Good. All right, it's 48. And so we know that little triangle perimeter is 48, and they gave us that big triangle perimeter is 72. So 48 is to 72 as, and then we start with a side. So you could start with the left side, 16 of your little triangle is to A, Angelica, yes. And we do a little cross multiplication, 48A equals 16 times 72. Are you going to do that for me? You got it, Jess? 16 times 72? Oh, whoa. 1,152. 1,152. That sounds about right. Let me double check. Big number. Um, let's see. 72 times 1, 6 equals 1,152. Then we divide by 48 on both sides. A equals 24. All right, so we got a 24. Now we can start using that if you want to. 16 is to 24. You can just keep using that all day. It's a little bit easier. Yeah. It's a little smaller number. It's still, they're still pretty big numbers, but yeah. So you could continue then. Once you found 16 is to 24, that equals 12 is to what? B. Good. So 12 times 24, divide by 16. 288 divided by 16, okay. 18. All right, so there's another one. Then you can continue to use 16 is to 24 for the next one. 20 is to C. So 20 times 24, 480 divided by 16, 30. C equals 30, and there you found all your answers, okay. Now, if you wanted to, Abby, you asked, oh, are we using 16 to 24? Yes. You could still choose to use 48 is to 72 every time, and mm -hmm. you will still get the same answer. Okay? I just took it down to 16 is to the 24 because the numbers were a little bit smaller. If you had to do it by hand, you would want to use smaller number. All right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. All right, so you got that. I like the perimeter way. You like the perimeter way. All right, well, just use what you know. All right, let's talk about scale factor on the next. Oh, let's see, is it down below? Let's see, the ratio, right below these drawings, it talks about the next principle, the next thing we got to consider. The ratio found by comparing at the very bottom of your page under the triangles we were just on, back up, 389A. The ratio found by comparing the measures of corresponding sides of similar triangles is called the constant of proportionality, or the scale factor. And you've worked with scale factor in pre-algebra and algebra. And it's just the constant of proportionality. What is its scale? How much smaller or larger is something to something else? Maps use scale factor. Models use scale factor. You make a little model of a building, and it's the same scale. Like you could measure something on the building that's an inch, and it matches to the regular building of eight feet. So the scale factor is one inch to eight feet. So Define, so it says in, let's see, um, if, is that on the next page? The drawing. Yeah, the drawing's on the next page. Yep, okay, so look at the drawing. So we have two triangles. A, B, C is the little triangle, a very little triangle up at the top. A is top vertex, B is bottom left, and C is bottom right. And A to B is 3. A to C is 5 on the right, and B to C is 7. Then we have a bottom triangle that has more measurements in it, and we're told they're similar, so we know these are proportionate, but we could test it out. You have B at the top, E at the bottom left, and F at the bottom right. D to E on the left is 6 units. D to F on the right is 10 units. And E to F at the bottom, they put the measurement on the inside of the triangle is 14. So 3 to 6 <clears throat> as 7 to 14. Uh, yep, that's true, isn't it? Yeah. One half. Yeah, those are both one half. Yeah. yeah. Same and then, the third one. Okay. So you just discovered that each ratio is equivalent to 1 to 2, isn't it? We simplify it. Yeah. And it's good. So the scale factor of triangle ABC to D, the little one, ABC to DEF is 1 to 2, 
the scale factor from the big one to the little one is two to one. You flip it over. It's saying the big one is two oh. times bigger than the little one. Yeah. Or if we say it's the little one to the big one, we say it's one time once of, of two of the big ones. It's one half of the big one. Okay? So depending upon how you write it is the scale factor. So if it's little to big, you got to write little to big. If it's big to little, you got to write the big number to the little number. Okay? So you could have the scale factor in two different order. All right? Let's go figure out the scale factor on the next example. Turn the page, 390, excuse me, 390. And it says, it's pretty cool, isn't it? Determine the scale factor of UVW to XYZ. So we have um, two triangles, looks like they look like a translation, a slide. U is the very top vertex. Um, Oh, V, sorry, V. V is the very top vertex. U is the bottom left. Got to get my braille straight here. And then W is all the way over to the right. Okay. And from V to U on the left is 10. And from V to W on the right is 15. And from U to W on the bottom is 20. You got those? Yep. All right, now you got a, you got a slide. You got a translation down below. And we have a little baby triangle, all right? And the top vertex is Y, the bottom left is X, and the bottom right is D. From Y to X is 6, from Y to Z is 9, yep. and from X to Z is 12. We're told they're similar. We could check it. 10 is to 6, is 15 is to 20, cross multiply. And sure enough, yep, that works, right? Okay. So um, we know that these are similar, and we want to find the scale factor. So we reduce these things. You take any one of them, and you can reduce it. 10 is to 6 reduces to what? That goes into both 10 and 6. 2. two. So 10 divided by 2 is 5, and 6 divided by 2 is 3. So it's a 5 to 3 ratio. 5 to 3, 5 to 3. So every 5 inches on one this triangle, it would be 3 inches on the little one. Every 5 feet on this triangle would be 3 feet on the little one. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Every 5 mm -hmm. JJ shoes right, <laughs> on this one would be 3 JJ shoes on the little one. It doesn't, wow. five, five, every 5 fingernails. You know, would be three fingernails on the little one. That's what it means. <laughs> Double check the ratio. 15 is to 9. VW is to YZ. 15 is to 9. Does that reduce to 5 to 3? Yeah. 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 15 divided by 3 is 5. 9 divided by 3 is 3. Mm -hmm. Common factor. Let's try 20 is to 12. What's the common factor of 20 and 12? Uh, yeah. 2, but there's a bigger one. Oh, there's 4, there's right? 4. Yeah. four. 20 divided by 4 is 5. five. 12 divided by 4 oh, is yeah. 3. 3. Okay. Works. Now, that's the big one to the little one. It's 5 to 3. If we were asked to go reverse and say what's the scale factor of the little triangle, x, y, z, to the big triangle, u, v, w, what would you say? 3 to 5. You say the reciprocal. That's right. That's mm -hmm. easy as that. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. All right. Okay. So turn the page. I do want one more thing in this section, and then we'll just practice. All right. In the figure, this is on page A390. In the figure, triangle ABC is similar to DEF, so they're giving you that. Suppose the scale factor of ABC to DEF is one half. All right. So they're going to show us. They're showing us these two cute little triangles. We've got ABC up at the top. In the typical order, A is at the top, B is at the bottom left, C is at the bottom right, and then there's a bigger triangle in a translation below it, D at the top, E at the bottom left, and F at the bottom right. All right. Okay. And it says, and then on the next page, what we need to do, let's turn the page, and it says, um, P, per, P stands for perimeter, capital P. P 
of triangle ABC over, so they put this in a simple fraction form, over P of triangle DEF all over P of triangle, or yeah, triangle ABC of equals one half. So they did this down below, they did this in um, uh, like spatial format for your fraction, okay? They put a big huge fraction bar and they put on the top P of triangle ABC over P of triangle DEF. Why that equals one, one half. That equals one half. Because of the theorem, we know perimeters are proportional. So the scale factor of the perimeter will also be one half, won't it? One over two. So it's reminding you of that. So you so then they take and they say, well, if I had the perimeter of triangle ABC over the perimeter of triangle DEF and I wanted to solve for the perimeter of one of them, I would multiply by the perimeter of the other on both sides to cancel it out and I realize that my perimeter of triangle ABC is one half my perimeter of triangle DEF. They're just showing you, proving to you, that in general if the scale factor of one triangle to another triangle is a certain amount of number, then then that number is the scale factor of the perimeter. So if it is one to two, then you take one to two of the perimeter. Duh, right? If it's two to one, then you take two to one of the perimeter. If it's five to three, you take five to three of the perimeter in any order. So we're going to practice that in the next example. So example three on page C390 is the last example for this section, and then we'll turn off the recording and just practice exercises. There's no drawing, we just got to think. So it says, suppose triangle SLC is similar to triangle GFR. What page number? 390C. And the scale factor of triangle SLC to triangle GFR, so you got to notice the order, SLC to GFR is 2 to 3. Find the perimeter of GFR if the perimeter of SLC is 14 inches. So if it's 2 to 3, they write it out in spatial format, triangle SLC over triangle GFR is 2 to 3, then that would equal 14 to X. We keep our, we keep our scale factor in the ratio of SLC to GFR, and then we make it equal to SLC's perimeter over X, which is the perimeter of GFR that we want to find. So it's just a simple proportion. 2 is to 3 is 14 is to X. What do we do? Cross, multiply, and divide all day long, right? So 3 times 14 is 42. 2 times X is 2X. It details this down below. Find the cross products. Then 2X equals 42. They use the division property of equality to divide by 2 on both sides and x equals 21. So the perimeter of GFR is 21. Right? It's a 2 thirds times 14, isn't it? 14 over x. All right? Or 2 is to 3 as 14 is over x. You just set it up. It's not 2 thirds of 14. It's 3 halves, really. You have to flip it. But they don't show that. What they show is don't think that way. Just set it up as a proportion. 2 is to 3 as 14 is x. If we wanted to do it in reverse, we would say 3 is to 2 as x is to 14, and we would still get the same answer, all right? So let's try one in the your turn on the very next page. It says, suppose triangle PQR is similar to triangle XYZ, and the scale factor of PQR to XYZ is 5, 6. 5 to 6. Find the perimeter of XYZ. So you got to pay attention to how they write it. They write it P Q R two X Y Z. So P Q R comes first, then X Y Z, and that equals five to six. All right. So we have five is to six as, and then they told us the perimeter of P Q R is twenty five centimeters, right? Is to X. Twenty five is to X. Yeah. All right. Just keep it in that order. So 5 is to 6 as 25 is to x, cross multiply, 6 times 25 is 150, that equals 5x, divide by 5 on both sides, 
and x equals 150 divided by 5 is 30, right? Yeah. x equals 30 centimeters. Don't forget to label, okay? So the trick is that math is very simple, isn't it? Yeah. Cross multiplying and dividing all day long is not hard. What you have to do is pay attention to the order they give it to you in and keep that same order before you cross multiply and divide. And then you're, you're cruising through all these check your understandings and questions that have to do with perimeter. So the main emphasis of this section is that perimeter is also the same proportion as all your corresponding sides. And then you can take your corresponding sides and reduce them, as, simplify them as best you can and that is your scale factor. And your scale factor is also proportionate to your perimeter. All right? Pretty cool. And basic math. Really think back to all this stuff is stuff you learned in pre-algebra. You learned how to do proportions in pre-algebra. You learned about ratios in pre-algebra. You learned even about similar figures in pre-algebra. Now we just take it up another notch where we add some more values. We do some algebra links with it. You really have to figure out, based upon the drawings, which sides correspond with each other. Pay attention to the way the letters are in order. You're becoming these geometry students that are much more in tune to and detailed about the rules, right, and the, and the grammar of geometry, and carefully writing out the information and solving for the missing link, the missing piece, all right? So that's the end of 9-7. I'm going to turn the video off. And then we'll go into practicing under the check your understanding.